Good evening and welcome to Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. Thanks for joining me tonight. We continue our investigation into Davi Vanity, the leader of Blood on the Dance Floor, amidst allegations and reports that he has been involved in inappropriate sexual relationships with at least 22 underaged young women. As you know, the last couple of weeks, we've, we've been taking a look at these allegations and we've spoken to a number of people tonight. I am humbled, I am honored that I have with me Victim Zero. You may know her as Jessie Slaughter from her days on the internet. Her real name is Damien Leonhart, and she joins us now on Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. Damien, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for being brave. I need to tell you that the comments on YouTube tonight are so incredibly supportive. People are, are, are thanking you for coming forward and really telling your story for the first time live exclusively in an interview setting like this. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thanks for being here tonight. Thank you for having me on your show. Let's start, I guess, at the beginning. Very good place to start. It is. It is. And thank you again for, for the courage you're showing here. How did you first meet Davi Vanity? I lived in a very small town in Florida, and some people who I went to school with and other people who I just hung out with in the town knew who he was and had him added on my space. And I had been shared some of his music and I added him on MySpace uh, just because I thought he was cool. I thought his music was cool. I was into like gothic culture back then. I was 10. I liked everything under the sun that had a skull on it. So he fell in. I went to a show and I met him. We had talked on MySpace a little bit before the show and I... Uh, I was very excited to meet him when I went. I dressed up and everything. Damien, you were t 10 years old at the time. Yes. How does a 10 year old, and I guess it's not that unusual. I mean, my kids were, you know, 10, 11, 12 when I first took them to concerts. How did you even get to this concert? Was it a large setting? Was it at a club? Was it a private party? Set the scene for me. Uh, it was a fairly small concert. Uh, it was only just basically people we knew. Um, it was before Blood on the Dance Floor had gotten really big. And how did you actually meet Davi? Was this after the concert or was it during the autographs or what was going on there? He was just hanging out like during the before the concert and the after the concert period. And so I just talked to him both before and after. Um, I I tried really hard to get his attention because I thought he was cool and I had a crush. You saw him as a major celebrity. Yeah, I saw him as like a creative influence in the place I lived. And so I was like, yeah, I want to be with this dude who does cool hair and makes cool music and like is a model and stuff. And how did he treat you? What was his interest in you in the very beginning? He, he would be like, sorry, yeah, sorry. trying to Take gather my words. Yeah. He was often like, kind of like a mean friend like he was my friend, but he was also constantly trying to improve me. Um, like I had a MySpace, but he convinced me to basically redo my MySpace and change my name on there to Jessica Slaughter. And that um, was his. It was his idea to to make your identity Jesse Slaughter. So your nickname was Jess Jesse, right? Yes. And where did the slaughter come from? We just went through a bunch of like scene names that sounded cool, like. Jessica Jealousy, a um, couple other ones. But I think we just thought Jesse Slaughter sounded the coolest. And what, I mean, I guess at 10 years old, you really don't think, 
you know, about the future or long term. You live in the moment, but what did you think the relationship was at the time? Was he like a, a mentor, a, a, like a yeah. little brother to you? He was, he was like a mentor. He was, he helped teach me how to play guitar. He taught me how to do hair stuff. Uh, I didn't see him like super often, but when we did hang out, it was often like, like hanging out. Um, even though he was kind of like mean and had a short temper and would be like rather bitchy towards me. I still like really like to hang out with him and learn things from him. And I, I just thought he was like, a cool older dude who wanted to be my friend. Um, my parents had their friends around me my entire childhood because I was an only child. So it didn't really seem all that weird to me for an adult to be friends with a younger person. Uh, and also I was a horny little kid and I, I thought he was hot. So of course I wanted to make out with him, but I was 10. Like, <laughs> you know, control yourself, dude. Exactly. And he was what, 23, 24 or something? He was 24. 24 at the time. You're 10, he's 24. And did your parents have any concerns about this relationship? They didn't know about the full extent. They just knew that we hung out. They knew that we wrote music together. They'd met him a couple of times. Uh, my mom talked on the phone with him quite a few times. And what did he tell your parents about your relationship? that we were hanging out, we were writing music together, that he was saying that I was a good musician and that he was curious about my ability. And so we just, my parents, they knew I was interested in music. And so they thought that me having a sort of musical mentor was a good thing. You were his muse in a way, but they weren't concerned about any inappropriate contact. No, and they're from the 60s. They're hippies. They didn't think about that. It didn't even cross their minds of like, oh, yeah, we should be more concerned about this relationship. Did he scare you at all? No. <laughs> I mean, like, kind of, but not in a, like, threatening way. He Sometimes you get mad and, like, threaten to take stuff away like threatened to delete my MySpace or threatened to like break things of mine. And that was never fun. Um, but we wouldn't, he, he didn't like, like he, he didn't terrorize me. Right. And, and where would you meet? Where would you go? What would you do when you were 10 going on 11 with this 24 year old guy, Dobby Vanity? Sometimes we would hang out at my house. Sometimes we would hang out uh, wherever his place was. Sometimes we would just hang out with friends or go out in public. Um, we just kind of hung out wherever. It was usually his place or like, wherever he was staying. And right around this time, he was in hot water for allegedly having a relationship with an underage girl in Colorado. Yep. Uh, did, did you yeah. know about this? Did your parents know about this? Was it a, a concern for anybody? It was It was kind of a big deal. Like, when it happened, it was a huge deal. My parents freaked out about it because they weren't necessarily concerned about what the allegations were, but they were like, oh, why has your friend been arrested? And afterwards, it was this big campaign of like, well, she lied. She obviously lied. She recanted from the police. Um, but like at the time when it was all going down, it was very confusing and we were getting conflicting stories from different people. Uh, and then afterwards, he kind of like, he was on tour at the time. So he, he distanced himself from me. And then he started seeing other older women at the same time publicly as he was fooling around with younger girls to sort of like have a cover. To make it look like he was in appropriate relationships. Did you ever ask him about the allegations in Colorado? No, I, I, I didn't ask him about the, the rest or anything. I asked him like why the band split up and what happened to Garrett and uh, 
like stuff like that. But I never went into detail about what he was arrested for. <laughs> it kind of just seemed obvious and it kind of just seemed like, well, shit, I'm glad he's not in prison. Uh, Cause I was 11 and I was dating him and I, I, I don't know. I wanted him to be okay. When did he take the relationship with you sexual? Pretty immediately. And I ask this question not to be insensitive, but because it fits an apparent pattern of similar acts. How did it start? What did he do? Um. I don't feel quite comfortable going into uh, extreme detail on the subject of the individual incidents, but uh, the beginning of that sort of thing, he, he was very obsessed with like my mouth and putting his fingers in my mouth. And then like very soon wanted me to give him a blow job, um, like pretty much immediately after meeting him. You're but, 10 or 11 years old. Yeah, yeah. I was a 10 year old and he fingered cake into my mouth and then wanted me to blow him in a bathroom. Like, it, it's awful. It blows my damn mind. I don't believe this. Like, my brain has trouble processing a lot of it because it feels horrifyingly unreal. It feels like this should never have happened. And yet, here I am with these memories, with this emotional baggage. It's, ugh. I mean, I can't even imagine how you process that as a 10 or 11 year old kid, no matter how sophisticated you are, no matter who your parents are, no matter what you know about music or how you dig this guy or whatever, you're Legit. 10 or 11 years old. Legit. I didn't know about sex. I didn't know how to give a blowjob at the time. I had to be instructed. It, it's like he taught me most of what the beginning of my sex ed was. And that's legitimately horrifying to think about. Did you have feelings for him actually? And did you feel that you were in a situation where if you didn't do what he asked, you would disappoint him, that he would be mad at you? And as a, as a 10 or 11 year old, you feared making him upset. Not that he was gonna beat you perhaps, but that you just didn't want him to be disappointed in you. You wanted to be cool. You wanted to hang with Davi Vanity. Yeah, I, I, wanted, I wanted to be one of the cool kids in his group. I wanted to be like Jay. I wanted to be like Garrett. I wanted to go to raves and dress up in cool outfits and take cool pictures. And I just, I loved him. I genuinely loved him. And I still, to this day, cannot shed the primal sympathy I have for him, especially after developing similar personality stuff because spending my like formative years with him and I just it makes me so sad and disappointed in him that he has continued this behavior for years even after being called out multiple times even after being arrested he's never learned better did you tell anybody about all this at the time or was it just something yeah. you, you you held in or who, who did yes, you tell I told my friends at school, I told random people on the internet, nobody believed me. Like whenever we took pictures together it was with his camera and he kept all the photos, we would upload them to my MySpace from his house. And then I would just go home and save the photos. I never had any like proof of us together. So I just kind of, nobody believed me, but I told people. Would he, do nice things for you? Would he say nice things to you? How did yeah. he treat you? He was very sweet when he wanted to be. He, you, he wasn't very thoughtful of a person, but he would try to be generous and he would often guess at things that you would want. Um, 
Or if you learned one major like thing you liked, he would fixate on that thing. Uh, but he was, you know, nice. Generally bitchy, but all of them were bitchy at the time. Like, it seemed like none of them were really good friends, and we all just kind of hated each other and wanted to be catty, but still wanted to be cool together. So. What did you want? What did you think was going to happen here? I thought that I was going to grow up and that he was going to reveal me somehow. And that we were going to have a happily ever after. I was going to join the band or start playing an instrument for them or be their merch girl or something and go on tour and run away with Dobby Vanity into the sunset. But And did he promise you this? Did he say that you were going to come on tour? And yeah, he, did. he he like he would make a bunch of like very grand promises and being like, I'm going to take you on tour with me. Uh, like. I'm gonna like help you write an album, and it it never happened. They were all. He was gonna make you a star as well. Yeah, like, Did but he was like, but you gotta keep quiet for now because if if anybody finds out right now, you're too young. I gotta train you. You gotta be like under wraps, and so like. Did you do normal things like a boyfriend and girlfriend would do, or were you his little secret? Some of it seemed normal, but now looking back, I know it wasn't normal. Like, we would go out and get something to eat. Um, but he would constantly be sort of playing off me as his, like, little cousin or little sibling or something. He would just, he, he was always really weird about it. How do you um, even process, like, how do you even process this as, a, as an 11 year old kid? I just thought it was the norm. I just thought like, well, in order for cool dude to like me, I gotta be quiet about it until I'm old enough. And like, I knew it was wrong, but I also didn't care because we were all doing horrible things at the time. And so it just seemed to dissolve away into this, well, we're all doing it scenario. Did he give you drugs? Did he give you alcohol? Did he ply you in any way? He attempted to give me drugs and alcohol, but I wasn't really into that. Um, I I just, I've had um, issues with certain drugs since I was very young. Um, MDMA makes me insane. I have bipolar disorder and it sends me into an immediate manic episode and I learned that very quickly. So it, it was just kind of one of those things where I was, I didn't, really i would take like sips of beer i didn't like beer i would take maybe like a shot of vodka every now and then there was a picture that you gave me today to use to promote tonight's interview it's a picture of you and davi one of the few that exists when he found out that you had this picture and that you use it online how did he react he was very angry at first he was like how did you get this picture like like how physically he wanted to know how i got it and then he wanted to know why i wanted it and i was like because i want a picture with you like i idolize you dude and she was like okay whatever i i get it whatever just keep being quiet don't make a big deal out of it at least it's only that picture um and then he just kind of like blew it off like it wasn't a thing anymore. I put it as my profile picture on Facebook for Christ's sakes because I was just so proud. You were with this celebrity. You were his girl. Yeah, I was I was so proud. And how then, long how long did this continue, Damien? Until the Jesse Slaughter incident. Um not should specify the Udun goofed incident. Uh that summer, the summer of 2010, a girl who I went to school with posted a thing on sticky drama about me dating him and I retaliated with the pop a block in your mouth and make a brain slushy video which was directed at her uh and my mom went to talk to Davi to try to squash it to basically be like let's talk together and say that they're not doing anything and then everything will be fine 
But by the time she got a hold of him, he had already gone on a giant tirade disowning me and calling me a slut and saying he never knew me. So, so this this young woman, for people who don't know, posted something on Sticky Drama, which was at the time kind of a gossip page. And basically she called you and Davia for having a relationship. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah. And did you have any idea at the time how this would explode on the internet? No. I was afraid that the police were going to get involved and that Davi was going to get arrested. So my first instinct was cover Davi's ass, cover my own ass, get angry at this girl. <laughs> and it, it spiraled in a completely unexpected direction. You talked about the You Done Goofed song video. Where did that come from and, and how did that play into all this? Uh, the You Done Goof video was a video that my dad made with me where I was crying and he was yelling at the camera. He spouted some very meme-worthy lines, and one of those lines got turned into the name of a song by Blood on the Dance Floor, where they were talking about me, and uh, some of the lyrics include, My name and reputation won't be the target of a slut. I'll be on top of the world and you'll be cutting yourself fucked. Um, also... And look at me, I'm beautiful, not a suspect of rape. Don't you know I'm fucking boss? Read the fucking nameplate. Lyrical gold. Um, but and so you're, there you are, there you are at 11 years old with this song and video. It was video. released on my 12th birthday. He released it on my birthday knowing it was my birthday. On your 12th birthday, this video, this song with the lyrics you just recited was released basically just excoriating. Mm -hmm. accusing you of being a slut and, and everything else. Yep. So outraging your father that he turns to the internet in a video. This actually, the thing happened before the song was released. Right. But he knew this was brewing and was trying to protect his daughter. Yes. And attack back at uh, the sticky drama situation. That leads into this horribly embarrassing video targeting you suddenly at 12 years old, you are an internet sensation for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. How do you even deal with that at 12 years old? I didn't. I developed maladaptive dreaming, daydreaming disorder. I secluded myself to the internet. I had a series of very tumultuous, tumultuous, rocky relationships. Tumultuous, what? <laughs> Uh, and I, I, I never recovered, but I never grew in the first place. And then on top of all of this, his quote unquote fan club, the Slash Gash Terror Crew, uh -huh. <laughs> mauls you viciously in virtually every way imaginable. Yeah. What, what did they do? What did this group do to you? How would you best explain that? Basically sent hordes of fans to send me hate mail, instructed them to get in on the 4chan raids that were going against me that were sending things like pizzas and just random junk mail to my house. Um, things like telling them to tell me to go kill myself, just basically sending them in a massive mob against me. How bad did it get for you? Psychologically, emotionally? I attempted suicide for the first time on my 12th birthday. On your 12th birthday? I listened to that song and then I tried to overdose. Um, yeah. That was, I don't know. I don't really remember. But uh, never got caught, woke up, everything was fine. Continued on life as if it was fine. Did you ever talk to Davi again after that? No. So from the age of 10 to 12, you were with on and off Davi Vanity, hoping that you'd be his, his woman, his girl. Yeah. 
what do you think you meant to him? Now looking back on it, I realize it wasn't important at all because I just have to look at the reality of the situation. People don't even remember me. I was like a shadow in the background. People who I was once friends with are now saying that they didn't know anything about anything that happened to me. I, I just, can you please repeat the question? What do you think you meant to Davi Vanity? In reality, he meant the world to you. You devoted two years of your young, impressionable, adolescent life. Thank you. Sorry. Sometimes when I speak, I uh, know this is this is this is this is raw emotional territory. You have uh, my undying respect for even going here with me tonight. So there's no apology necessary. Uh, I just now looking back, I realized that I was just another girl he fought. I was just another girl he lied to. I was just another girl he used. He he didn't actually care. He wanted my lyrics. He wanted my body. That was it. He, he didn't even care about me enough to, like, try to cover this up. He just wanted, he just wanted me gone. I hope... I hope you realize that none of this is your fault. You. And I mean that all in all sincerity. This is not your fault. You were 10, 11, and 12 years old. Uh, saying, I'm sorry this happened to you is an understatement. I'm not just a reporter, but I'm a parent as well. I mean, I, 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 I'm just crushed here. I can't imagine what this was like for you what it was like for your father, what it was like for your mother, no matter what the relationship between parent and child, this had to kill your dad and your mom. Yeah, they weren't fond of it. My mom still, I had a conversation with her the other day where she got very heated about Davi and especially about his lyric taking because that's a habit of his. It's, yeah, my dad got very mad. I can only imagine. What toll did this take on your family? What did Davi Vanity take away from your family? I mean, basically everything that we, every sense of security that we had had for ourselves before the incident kind of dissolved. We were suddenly public figures. We were under scrutiny. My dad was constantly under investigation for things, most of them not true. He was investigation for child molestation, which he never did. He was investigated for drugging me, which he never did. Eventually, I ended up in foster care after we got in a fight. Uh, I don't even remember what over at this point. Uh, but yeah, it, it had a lasting your dad sadly passed away. Indeed. Your mom? How is your relationship with your mom today? Uh, I'm distant with her, but we still talk occasionally. Come to find out that some 22 young women are now coming forward, and we've had some of the people on this show telling virtually identical stories to yours. Yeah. What, does that say to you? what does that say to you about Davi Vanity? He's, he doesn't learn. He has this pattern of behavior and he is unwilling to accept any form of change in his life. Even when presented with his what would be a pedophile's dream scenario of you get this one thing for the rest of your life and their parent is trying to protect you. He still blows it like he's a dumbass. He's, he just, he doesn't know when to quit. And it's sad. And it makes me sad. 
Because, like, dude, you're better than that. At least I used to think you were better than that, but you've proven me wrong. Who is Dobby Vanity? A sad, sad little boy who doesn't know when to realize he has mental health issues that hurt other people. You're now 21 years old. What do you want people to know? How do you cope with this? What helps you get through your days today? Honesty. In the end of the day, you can only speak the truth that you know. Even if, even if the world doesn't necessarily agree with your reality, you experienced what you experienced and that is your own to keep and to cherish and to hate. But the only thing you can do is just continue being honest, even if, even if it's uncomfortable, because it, it just, it eats away like acid inside you when you're quiet. Especially knowing he went and did so many things afterwards. Do you think he's still out there doing this to other girls, other young women? Certainly. There's, there's not a doubt in my mind. I get messages from young girls who he's following them and they're following him. And they're messaging me things like, hey, if you're lying, you can tell me. It's okay. And it's like, as if that's not suspicious as hell. As, like... Yeah. This is not easy for you to talk about, as brave as you're being and as important as it is. We were touch and go tonight, right up until airtime. Yeah. What made you decide to come forward and tell this story the way you're telling it tonight? I just need to do it because if not, it'll just eat away at me. I have to be heard. It feels like, like I have to vomit this poison out of me in order to get better. Um, so I guess here I am. You're my peyote. <laughs> Sorry, that was a very Native American reference. <laughs> no, I, I know. I, I get it. I've, I've walked this earth for a long time. I understand what you're getting <laughs> at. What, what do you say, Damie, to other young women who have had similar experiences with Dobby Vanity? What should they do? If you can, speak out. If you have evidence, present it post it, publish it, tell the world, because in numbers, we can get him taken down. We can do something. I had no evidence for 10 years. I had nothing to stand on. And what we need is people who have evidence. If you have something, please release it. If you have a story, please release it. Anything helps. Because without it, I didn't speak for 10 years because I didn't think anybody supported me. And it wasn't until I started speaking out that I got support. And more people just have to continue that wave. He's been investigated at least twice in Ellis County, Florida, once in Colorado for this kind of activity. He skated both times because either the alleged victim changed the story, he's alluded uh, to financial payments uh, in some videos, in some uh, digital appearances. Do you think he's bought his way yeah, out of this? Yeah, I got one of those, dang. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, well, I'm being sarcastic. No, I know, I know. Do you think he's bought his way out of this? Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. Occasions? Certainly. He's a rich kid from a rich family. He's bought his way out. He's got connections to police in Florida. He's got a bunch of money, even though he's in a lot of debt now because he put himself that way. But he's, he's just a rich kid who doesn't know consequences. How do you think he's gotten away with this for so long? People not wanting to believe women. 
people not wanting to like we see people who we don't think are desirable and we want to believe uh, the worst of them and i guess i'm just a good example you know you see the foul mouth kid and you want to think the foul mouth kid has done something wrong so you know you're not going to believe them when they've come out about the horrifying thing and he preys on young women who are vulnerable who are in this sort of like rough and tumble cast who have broken families who are into like heavy music and gothic culture he picks on the people who are least likely to be believed do you think people still look at you and say yeah that's horrible she was 10 11 and 12 years old but her, you know where were her parents what was she thinking oh, yeah. uh why didn't she come forward earlier why didn't she tell police uh, all the questions that some people would ask who've never been in this situation or never talked to a survivor as we're doing right now. What do you say to those people? It's tough, especially when you're in a very complicated situation where there's many layers and things moving at the same time. Like during the You Done Goofed incident, I did talk to police about Davi, but they didn't want to hear me. They were so focused on the allegations against my father that they just skated over Dobby. And that happens to a lot of victims where their stories are either swept under the rug or there's just like, just forgotten about in the chaos. When was the last time you actually spoke to Dobby? Like late June, early July of 2010. 2010. So almost 10 years. Yep. Did you ever text him? Did you ever reach out to him in any way since then? I, I think I may have sent him messages, but they were like hysterical. Um, I don't. I was very young. I stopped messaging him by the time I was like thirteen, but I was one of those exes. And did he ever get back to you? Did he ever say anything to you? Did he ever tell you don't talk about this after no. that conversation? No, the only person from Buena La Dance Floor I've had any conversation with since the incident was Jay. I had a very short, not even conversation. I sent him an apology on Instagram, wanting to talk to him about the incident. Um, and he sent me, LOL, I don't even know who you are. And I sent him, I used to go by the name Jesse Slaughter. And he left me on red. So that's, that's the extent of my conversation. We had Jay on last week. Mm -hmm. I, I'm so proud of him. I'm legitimately proud of him. If he's watching this, you go, my dude. I'm proud of you. You get your shit together. And also, you have an amazing mustache. <laughs> he strikes me as a, as a nice guy who got tangled up in a really evil, bad situation, who not <laughs> victimized like you were victimized, but was victimized in some ways as well. Is that legit? Yeah, he's, though my contact with him is strained and he has been rather catty towards me, um, I have no harsh feelings against him and I genuinely believe that he, he got in some bad shit. He was like 16 when he met Davi, 17. He was like barely 18 when he joined Blood on the Dance Floor. I remember when he joined. It, it's, he he was taken advantage of. He was taken on a ride. It's, it's harsh. It's fucking sucks. I feel for the boy. What did Davi Vanity take away from you, Damien? The sense of social stability I had in my life and then slowly eroded away at every other sense of stability I had. Not even because of his direct actions, but just the snowball effect of everything. But as a human being, a young person, 21 years old, in terms of your relationships with people, what has this done to you? I find myself doing a lot of his similar behaviors, not, as, not pedophilia thing, Jesus Christ. Uh, but like the 
the aggression, the short temperedness, the emotional instability and and basically being a child and needing a caretaker. Like I I've basically been in the state of arrested development where I can barely take care of myself. I, I just, it really affected my developmental growth and my emotional growth. And I sit here being like a normal human being, but I'm just basically a sack of emotions held together with duct tape and pacifier. How do you get by? How do you do it? I don't know. <laughs> genuine answer i just try i just do it you just right. gotta keep doing it until it's done i mean like i can't kill myself at this point i got too much to live for so i guess i just gotta keep living yeah well don't, don't do that that's for sure do you think uh the whole me too movement is going to help bring justice to dobby vanity here i would hope so and i do believe so i think it has been an overall good thing for Dobby's victims being heard and for the tides changing on people in positions of power being able to get away with stuff. We've seen Epstein, Weinstein, Onision. I know you don't want to get to that. That's a whole, yeah, different, but story. That's a whole different thing. And now Dobby. Do you think Dobby's next to face adjustment? Justice? I hope so. That would be my hope. If you could say anything to Davi Vanity right now, right here, Damien, what would you say? You done goofed. That's it. And what should happen to him? He should be held accountable for his actions. He should. <laughs> I'm not the type of person who wants to put my opinion in on like whether people should go to prison or whatever, but he should at least go to fucking therapy. Like legit just That's not that's not too much to ask, you think? Yeah, I don't think like that's too much to ask. And he's on social media now promoting himself as dark arts yeah. official. Selling merch. And he's got young women following him. And and Gabriel and I watched a live stream, you know, a week or so ago. And and, and some of these young women are, are people who appear to be young women are saying, Oh, you really get me. I love you. This whole thing appears to be starting all over again for Davi Vanity under a different identity. Do you, what do you say to those girls who are fawning over him? Run. Like he's he's not. He's not what he promises you. He's he's not good. Like he he doesn't do what he says. He doesn't keep his promises. He's not going to protect you. He's not going to be there for you when the tides turn against you. He's going to snap exactly like he did to me. I should have learned from the girl in Colorado. You should learn from me. Did the internet let you down? Did it fail you, Davey? In the same way that society fails most people, yeah. I mean, it, it's just this larger machine of, like, disbelief. And I feel like it's, it's all intertwined, man. Like, all of the systems failed. All of them failed to catch this very complicated case. And please just look at my case and learn. Learn about intersectionality. Learn about, like, the effects of what different moving gears. It's, it's just, <sighs> things are complicated and we got to deal with that. A lot of people have watched this case very closely. Um, it's become uh, almost like a cottage industry. <laughs> people who paid attention to the Davi Vanity and, and to you back from the Jesse Slaughter days. 
a lot and a lot of those folks think that you were the warning that should have been heeded and so many of these other younger women wouldn't have had to go through this but everybody looked the other way everybody made assumptions that were wrong everybody thought oh well this is some you know crazy goth kid what's it going to take so people don't miss this warning Who knows? People walk in their continued circles and do their continued behaviors until they choose to look up. You just have to have the mind to choose to look up and see what's around you. Do you think Jesus Torres is watching tonight, Davi Vanity? Probably. And if you could look him in the eye, if he is watching tonight, what do you say to him? You done goofed. I, I don't really have anything to say. He just... <sighs> you disappointed me, man. I loved you when you let me down. I trusted you when you let me down. What the fuck, dude? It's, it's really cruel to have the trust and the love of somebody and then to just drop them? It's, it's exceptionally cruel, especially to do that to a kid. Did he steal your childhood? Yeah. When Can I you... first met him, I was playing with dolls and I slept with a sippy cup. When I, it... after the end, I was basically an adult. in every way including the wrong ways yeah yeah is there anything else damie that you want people to know tonight please be alert and aware and just keep your eyes open things Look for the small cracks. There's always small cracks. If something seems weird, it's probably weird. Always keep looking. For years, people just kind of like glazed over the incident and thought it was a bunch of weird coincidence. Please. All right. Damien Leonhardt, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I must tell you that the comments tonight coming in to uh, have a seat with Chris Hansen tonight are so overwhelmingly supportive, loving, caring, and people, including myself, Gabrielle, who's right here, Ryan, who's running the show tonight behind the scenes, uh, wish you only the best. Thank you for being brave enough to come on tonight, and we will as I mentioned before the show, keep in contact. We will have you back anytime you want. We will continue to investigate, and this case is far from over. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Have thank a good you night. for listening. Anytime, anytime. It's my pleasure. Damien, thank you. Stay safe, everybody. Okay, you too. All right. Wow. That's really something. Victim zero in the Davi Vanity Jesus Torres investigation. What a brave young woman. Um, a couple things before we say goodnight. Uh, obviously, thank you to God, Damien for doing that. Um, as a reporter, I promise you all, I'll stay on top of it. There was a lot of talk today and yesterday about the YouTube psycho brand in Washington. That investigation is far from over many things going on in the world. We're still working on that. He was shooting his mouth off today about something or challenging me to go on a live stream with him. That's not gonna happen. He knows that I've offered him an interview. He made the choice to demand $350,000. That's not gonna happen. Uh, the chances of me going on his live stream are about the same as the FBI or the Pierce County Sheriff's going on. Not gonna happen. The good thing about investigating predators is you know how predators are going to act. They never seem to surprise you. So that's that. Coronavirus, COVID-19, we looked at that last night. We'll continue to follow that 
developing pandemic as well. Uh, people, if you're not taking this seriously, you must stay safe, stay healthy, take the scientific experts advice. Thank you for having a seat with me tonight. Much more to come next week. Until then, remember, I'll be watching and I'll see you soon on the TV and right here on my YouTube channel. Have a good night. Stay safe. Stay healthy.